In more than 30 states, legislation that would allow banks and credit unions to work with cannabis-related businesses is in play. So pro-cannabis groups, as well as several banking associations, have thrown their support behind a bill, according to the Congressional Budget Office. This legislation would be responsible for a roughly $1.2 billion increase in bank deposits. And joining us to expand on what exactly that bill would do and the impact it could have on both the banking and the cannabis industries is Congressman Ed Perlmutter. He introduced the legislation and also Congressman Steve Stivers, a sponsor of the bill. Both serve on the House Financial Services Committee and worth noting, one is a Democrat and one is a Republican. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Congressman Perlmutter, if I could start with you, just explain a little bit of what the problem is and how this legislation would solve it. Sure. Uh, right now, it's actually 47 states have some level of marijuana use. Uh, and the state's laws are in conflict with the Federal Controlled Substance Act, which then makes banks very reluctant to provide any kind of banking services to marijuana businesses or businesses that conduct business with marijuana-related companies. So there's a lot of cash out there. And we want these businesses to be able to have credit cards, checking accounts, payroll accounts, and get the cash off the street, really from a public safety uh, standpoint. Uh, Congressman Cyrus, this one is for you. Are, do you worry that this bank, uh, by advancing this legislation, the more you legitimize the cannabis industry, that you're just creating the next big tobacco? Well, I don't think so. And let me tell you why I got involved in this. I'm not for recreational marijuana. Um, there is a company in my district that sells fertilizer and nutrients. They've realized that 25% of their profits come from cannabis-related businesses now. They're not in the cannabis business, but they sell nutrients. And obviously, like any other plant, marijuana needs nutrients. Uh, their banks are now threatening this fertilizer company with taking their bank accounts away. Uh, so it's not just cannabis-related businesses. These businesses are in our economy. If you're a landlord and you rent a store to one of these businesses, if you're an employee and you work in one of these businesses, you can't get a bank account, you can't get a mortgage, you can't get a car loan. If you go into these businesses, they have thousands and thousands of dollars of cash, and that invites armed robbery and crime. Uh -huh. uh, when you put the money in the banking system, you get access to suspicious activity reports that lets people know where there's problems, and you can freeze the money. You can't freeze cash. Yeah, so Congress I would just say this isn't about legitimizing the marijuana business. This is dealing with the banking relationships of businesses that exist in 47 states across the country. This is coming from the people up. This isn't, we're trying to deal with a, a problem involving cash on the streets. Mm -hmm. Congressman Stivers, how much bipartisan support does this legislation have? I would say it's fair to say Democrats tend to be more permissive uh, in terms of legalizing marijuana. Have, have your folks on your side of the aisle also been interested in getting on board with this? So this bill passed committee uh, and 11 Republicans uh, voted for it out of committee. So not quite half the Republicans, but since the committee, we've gotten a deal to add an amendment to the bill. And there are four more Republicans from the committee who voted no that will vote yes on the floor. So we now have more than half the Republicans uh, voting yes. I believe this bill will have enough bipartisan support to actually pass on what we call a suspension vote, which means it gets uh, a three-fifths vote in the, in, on the House floor. The criticism, this one is for both of you, I've seen of this legislation is that by, and, and it goes back to the legitimization, if you give these cannabis industries access to the banking system, access to, access to credit, they will balloon and continue to spread their products, come up with new lollipops for children, or that which are targeted towards children, even if the ages are restricted at 21. So what controls do you have, perhaps, on spending or the, the ways in which these businesses are allowed to pursue uh, these courses of action when you're giving them the greatest gift they could ask for, which is access to the regular banking system? Well, I guess I differ with the way you phrased the question. This really, if in the bill, we have a number of different uh, hoops that the banks have to go through to be able to provide any banking services, whether it's to the shop at or to the business itself, the marijuana business. And so 
One of them is to make sure there's no organized crime related to this particular business or this particular banking relationship. The other is that to keep it um, out of the hands of children. So from a banking perspective, we're trying to address the questions you just asked. Mm -hmm. Now, to say that this is going to balloon, I said there's 47 states. We've got to deal with the subject at hand, and that's what Steve and I are trying to do as uh, sponsors of this bill. Yeah, when, when there's only three states that have, uh, have no medical or other marijuana uh, legalization, I think we, the, the sort of uh, cat is already out of the bag on that. Uh, we do have to, I think, at some point uh, deal with how we're going to uh, deal with medical marijuana. I think we should uh, have clinical trials and make sure that there is efficacy and that we know what the side effects are. But, uh, but this is about banking and safety, and that's what this bill is going to be focused on. It's, it does have protections to make sure that we keep these products away from children, to make sure there's no organized crime, to make sure that these businesses are legitimately following the state laws. Hmm. So an, a, a similar proposal in the Senate has 30 lawmakers signed on. Uh, what are the prospects of this after it passes the House then being taken up by the Senate? Well, I'd say our job is to make sure we pass the House, and that's sort of the first order of business. And then the senators will move the bill as they choose. And so uh, Jeff Merkley from Oregon, Cory Gardner from my state of Colorado are the chief sponsors, so a Democrat and a Republican, just like we have right here. Very bipartisan effort, and they'll move it as they can. We feel there's going to be a very good chance of this passing both the House and the Senate and then going to the White House. So, I don't know, Steve may have a I different think if, opinion. I think if we get 290 votes or 300 votes out of the House, which I think is, is likely and, and possible and very likely, then I think it gets this bill some momentum going into the Senate. And the Senate, you know, they're a deliberative body. They'll maybe add some changes to it and then we'll work through it. But, uh, uh, you know, our job as members of the House is to pass this bill in the House. It came out of committee on a big bipartisan vote. I think it'll come out of the full House on a big bipartisan vote. Uh, Representative Perlmutter has been very uh, willing to make amendments. Uh, we've asked for some amendments. We've gotten those amendments. And I think that's what's going to give this uh, a big vote because it does have the protections we need, but still make sure that it looks out for safety of the general public. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Congressman. We really appreciate thank it. You, thank gentlemen. you, Next on Good Rising, morning, it's the you. Hawks thanks versus the Doves in the Trump administration's tug of war over its Iran policy. But which path will the president take? And 2020 contenders trade barbs on the campaign trail. I like that word. And it seems as if reparations might actually be getting a little bit of traction in Congress. The Hill's editor-in-chief, Bob Cusack, is going to weigh in on all of that when Rising continues.